Welcome to Electron Online and here's our third example of how to calculate the frictional forces when the coefficient of friction is not a constant. So here the problem asks if a block with a mass of 4 kilograms is pushed up against a spring that has a spring coefficient of 400 newtons per meter and the compression is the distance of 0.5 meters and then let go, how far up the incline will the box slide if the coefficient of friction on the horizontal portion is zero and the coefficient of friction starting at x equals zero at the bottom of the incline is equal to 0.02x plus 0.1. And of course, we should put divided by m here, uh, m being meters because it has to cancel out the meters belonging to the x there, but that's just a small formality. Okay, so how far up the incline will the block go? Well, the approach is exactly the same as before. We can say that the energy initial equals energy final, which means any work put into the system plus the initial potential energy plus the initial kinetic energy will be equal to the final potential energy plus the final kinetic energy plus the heat loss to overcome friction. Okay, so let's see here. Do we have any work put into the system? Well, we could say, well, somebody had to push the spring together. That would be the work done. But we already account for that in the potential energy portion. So in this case, we simply can call this zero. That's before the problem started. Potential energy would be one half kx initial squared. X initial is the amount that the spring is being compressed. There's no kinetic energy because nothing is moving when we let the block go. Potential energy final, it will have gained some height. So when the block finally comes to a rest, it will have gained some height, so it will be mgh plus, well, there's no kinetic energy because the block will not be moving when it reaches its maximum height, and the heat loss, that will be equal to the work done to overcome friction. Now let's try to figure out what that work done is to overcome friction separately over there. So let's imagine that the block will be on the incline right here. When the block is on the incline, let's draw some forces. So first we have the weight due to gravity, which is mg. Then we have the perpendicular component to the incline. This would be the angle theta, which is the same angle as this angle of the incline. So it would be mg cosine of theta. Then we have the force this way, which would be mg times the sine of theta. And then of course we would have the normal force pushing back, that's the surface pushing back against the block. So we have the normal force, and the normal force would be equal to mg cosine theta, which means there would be a friction force downward this way. So let's use the green color for that. So we here have the force due to friction, which is equal to the normal force times mu. Of course, the normal force is mg cosine theta, and mu would be, of course, defined by the mu over there. All right, so now I think we're ready to go ahead and calculate the work to overcome friction. So the work to overcome friction, so let's say, actually the better way to think about it is this. Let's say we push the block up, and so we're pushing the block up this way, and there'll be a small amount of distance that we cover from this distance to this distance. So let's call this distance dx. So we're going to call x the distance along the incline. So we push the block a small amount of dx upward and that's going to require a small amount of force. And so this is a small amount of work and so the, the small amount of work is equal to the force due to friction times the, the small amount of displacement. So we know that it took a small amount of work to push the block the small distance dx up the incline. And of course, that work will then be subtracted from the initial energy or will be added to the right side of the equation, however you want to look at it. So the force friction by definition, dw, is equal to the normal force times mu times dx. And of course, the normal force here is mg cosine of theta. So dw is equal to mg cosine of theta multiplied times mu times dx. All right, so let's see here. Um, the angle is constant, m and g are all constant, but mu is not a constant. What we're going to do now is put mu into the equation right here. So we have dw is equal to mg cosine of theta multiplied times 0.020x plus 0.10. Now, I'm leaving out the divide by m because I'm 
drop in the units because it makes it a little bit cleaner of an equation to look at and of course that will still be times dx. So now, we're go now we can go ahead and integrate both sides. That means that the total work done is equal to the integral of all the small little dw's which is equal to, let's pull the mg cosine theta out of the integral sign times the integral from 0.020x plus 0 0.10 times dx and we're going to be integrated from 0 to x final. We just don't know yet what that x final is. That's what we're looking for. Actually, of course, that would be the distance. So maybe we can just go ahead and put d in for a distance. That might be a better limit to use. All right, so now we can go ahead and integrate that. So that means that the work done is equal to mg cosine of theta times, integrate this, we get 0.020x squared divided by 2. Let me put the 0 over here so we don't get confused. Um, and then plus 0.10x, evaluated from 0 to d. All right, plug in the limit. Now, of course, this 2 will make that a 1, so that makes that a 1. So when we plug in the limits, so we get work done is equal to mg cosine of theta times 0.01x squared plus 0.1x. Oh, and when I plug in the limit, of course, the x's become d's. So it'll be d squared and d. All right. Now, we're going to plug that back into the equation here and calculate some of these values because we know uh, some of these things already. So here we have 1 half times k, which is 400, times x, which is 0 0.5 squared, equals mg, that would be 4, times 9.8. Now what about the height? How high is this relative to d? Now remember from trigonometry, if this is theta, let me draw the angle right here. So if this is h, and this is d, and this is theta, we can say that h is equal to d times the sine of theta. So instead of writing h, we're going to write d sine theta and put it right here. So that's d sine of theta plus the work to overcome friction, which is equal to m, which is 4, times g, which is 9.8, times the cosine of 30 degrees, times the quantity 0.01d squared plus 0.1d. All right, it's beginning to look like a quadratic equation. So let's go ahead and simplify things a little bit more. So we need a calculator. So we have 0.5 squared at uh, divided by 2 times 400. So this gives us 50. So this is 50 equals. Now the sine of theta, that would be the sine of 30 degrees, which is 1 half. So 1 half times 4 is 2 times that would be 19.6. So end up with 19.6 times d. Over here, we have uh, 4 times 9.8 times the cosine of 30 times 0 0.01 equals, so this would be plus 0 0.33948d squared. I probably have a few extra significant figures, but that's okay. I don't want a rounding error. Then I multiply this times this. And that would be 4 times 9.8 times 0 0.1 equals or plus 3.92 times d. So notice I have a differential, uh, not a differential, but a quadratic equation with the variable d. I have a d here, I have a d here, I've combined those, I have a d squared and a constant term. So zero equals three or 0 0.3395, I'll just run off to four, d squared plus 19.6 plus that. So 19.6 plus 3.92 equals, uh, let's see, 23.52d and minus 50. So now I have a quadratic equation. I can go ahead and solve that for d by using the quadratic formula. So therefore, d is equal to minus b minus 23.52 plus or minus the square root of 23.52 plus Oop, I should say that would be squared minus 4 times a. a would be 0 0.3395 times c, which is a minus 50. And the whole thing divided by 
2 times 0 0.3395. Let me get out of your way so you can see what I just did. So I plugged in the A, B, and C coefficients of the quadratic equation into the quadratic formula. And now I just have to solve for that. All right. Notice that the minus here cancels out the minus there. So I end up with 200 times 0.3395. Add that to 23.52 squared equals, take the square root of that. So simplified, this becomes minus 23.52 plus or minus. That would be 24.92 divided by 2 times 0 0.3395. Notice the only plausible answer is if I take the minus 23.52 plus 24.92. If I go minus, I get a negative value, which means it would be forward incline. That's not realistic. So it's a positive value only. So we have uh, 24.92 minus 23.52 equals divided by 2 and divided by 0.3395 equals. And the answer I get is 2.06 meters. So just slightly more than two meters of the incline before it comes to a stop. Again, the whole problem here is about finding the work done to overcome friction. We know that that can be calculated by taking a small infinitesimally motion or push up the incline, the distance dx. The work done for that small push is f dx. Notice that the force is the normal force times mu. And since mu is not a constant, but a variable force, we have to then integrate over the quantity from 0 to d. And the question, of course, is what is d? What is the final distance? So we end up with a quadratic equation that we have to solve. And that's how we solve that problem.